What's up, everyone? This is Anthony Martinez, and you are watching Radioactive Podcast. What's going on, guys? It is Victoria and Ian here from Radioactive, and today we are joined by the one, the only, Anthony Martinez from Dark Divine. How are you doing, Anthony? Fantastic. How are you? I'm so excited to have you on today. Like, hyped. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be on. It's really cool to formally have you on the show. Um, it was really cool to get to interview you on your tour bus and just that was fun. have you featured on the show as a feature Friday artist. I don't know if you saw that or not, but um, yeah, I watched a little bit of it. I caught it on, yeah. the, on the Instagram. Like, it's just really cool to have you on, man, uh, formally. Yeah. And uh, you get to meet, well, I, I you met her in Canada, you but. meet me, actually. I, I did. Yeah. Tw like 1,200 times because I kept going back and forth from the, the venue to the outside area. <laughs> just We just kept waving at each other, weirdly. Just Yeah. Sometimes you don't need words. It's just, no. you know, whole conversations. Exactly. I spoke and then, them with hands. This is the funny thing. <laughs> so when I had asked you for a picture and I was standing up on the stairs, I don't know. Yes. I think I played this off okay. When I was coming down the stairs, I almost like biffed it and tripped. almost tripped. Yeah. Oh, oh I remember. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. I saw it. <laughs> no, you, you played it off good, though. You played it off good. Okay. I've had 10 times more embarrassing things happen on stage. So you have nothing to worry about. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought I played it off okay. <laughs> you did. You played it off phenomenally. Um, but I did see it. <laughs> speaking of, you know, meeting you on this last tour, you guys just came off of a tour with Blackville Brides and VV. Can you just tell us about that tour? Um, if you have any favorite moments, did anything crazy happen? Stuff like that. Um... I have one crazy tour story that did happen. It wasn't on the Black Veil tour, but it was just before the Black Veil tour. I could, if, you, if you're interested in that kind yeah. of story. It's, all right, so, and don't ever do this, anyone watching. Um, before the Black Veil tour started, we were uh, in between tours with the Word Alive tour and the Black Veil tour. Uh, we were stocked, we were, we were staying at a uh, RV park in Colorado Springs, and I went to go visit a friend who lived up the mountain in Colorado Springs, and getting an Uber there was fine. Getting an Uber back was next to impossible. So the next day when it was time to come back, I just could not for the life of me get an Uber back. And I was like hours had passed and I just had, couldn't get an Uber. So uh, I looked on the map and I was like, all right, there is a town about two hour walk this way. I'm going to go to the town and then I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get a Uber from there. And so meanwhile, I'm, like, mind you, my phone is almost dead and I didn't, I wasn't able to charge it because I just didn't have time. So I was just like, all right, I'm doing this thing. We're just going to kind of off-road it. And so I walked for about an hour, 45 minutes, and um, just down a mountain. It was a beautiful walk, but there's this, like, looming fear of being homeless in Colorado. Um, eventually, I made it, like, like an hour, again, an hour, 45, and my phone died. And I'm at this, like, weird gas station slash grocery store, and I'm like, I, uh, yeah, all right, I got to figure out what to do because that, that, that was my last lifeline, so... I saw a guy pumping gas, and I'm like, all right, here we go. We're doing this. And I walked over to him. I said, sir, I'm not homeless, uh, but I am in need of a little bit of help. Are you willing to take me like five minutes down the road to this town? And he goes, sure, yeah, get in. So I'm now hitchhiking in the middle of a state I've never been to. Um, and we get to this town. It's like a little multiplex uh, commercial area. And now I'm like, all right, next, I got to figure out what the hell I'm going to do because my phone's dead. So I look around, and I'm like, uh, paint store, fuck it. Went into this paint store and uh, this lovely lady let me borrow a phone charger and I called Robbie who was at the RV park and I'm just explaining the situation that they might have to come get me and unplug the RV and everything and just make this big ass trek because I'm an idiot. And uh, the lady overhears me and says, oh, I'll take you. I don't give a, I don't, I don't give a shit. I'll just let me clock out real quick. And I'm like, okay. So she clocks out. I get in her car and she drives me to the RV park and then I just show up, you know, big grin on my face. I'm just like, hey guys. And <laughs> they're just kind of like bewildered as to my decision making. And uh, yeah, so I, so I hitchhiked down a mountain in Colorado Springs. And that's how I got, that's how I got back. <laughs> oh, also, sorry, the craziest part of that story. The last date of the Blackville tour was in Riverside, California. And uh, this girl comes to the merch table. She buys some merch, takes a photo, and she goes, you know my cousin? And I'm like, who's your cousin? And she goes, he was the person at the gas station that took you from the gas station to the paint store. And I'm like, oh, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> he single-handedly made this tour possible. <laughs> so 
a shout out. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's awesome. That sounds like the setup to a horror movie, dude. It, Which, I it mean... could have gone south real fast. <laughs> That's very stupid. I literally called Jay. I'm like, Jay, I just hitchhiked down a mountain. Don't be mad. And <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? I really Ooh. thought that story was going to go south. I was waiting for it to go south. No, I, I did too. And I, I was fucking there. But you know, it was a very, I, I res it restored faith in humanity for me for a little bit. So I appreciated that. <laughs> No, nah, dude, that's awesome. It makes me think of um, there's uh, I Prevail put this thing up on their Instagram page where this random dude who worked with the band was walking up to complete strangers and being like, hey, do you have a couple dollars so I can get a water? And finally, these two girls were like, yeah, dude, we got you. And then he was like, check this out. I'm going to take you guys to meet the band. And oh, it was like restoring faith in humanity that was like the message so that's that's awesome i mean you never knew you never know who you're gonna like run into it's like like that literally was a make or break moment for the blackfield tour being able to happen because my phone would have been dead no one have been no one have no, would have known where i was and that would have just made everything a headache so like yeah you don't you don't know how much of a help you really are to people when you're doing little things like that since we're kind of just spitballing before we go into this next question yeah. um there was a moment I saw you. So I came to see you in Missouri and then look at how that turned out. Um, yeah. And I thought I was shit out of luck, but then Cassidy invited me up to Wisconsin. The woman who gave you the, I know Cassidy. She was at yeah, the Iowa City show runs. on the yeah. live tour. America runs on uh, dark divine. We still have that sign. Hell yeah. No, Cassidy's great. We love her so much. She's just fantastic. And she drew a really cool picture of you. I, I don't saw know that. Dude, it was so incredible. I saw and the she, progress of it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> she sent me a picture. She had texted me, and she was like, oh, I'm not happy with how this turned out. And I was like, Dude, that looks so it looks good. looks better than I do in real life. What the fuck? <laughs> but um, I went with her to go see you guys in Madison, Wisconsin, right? And we're all rocking out. And then my favorite Dark Divine song ever, personally, is Cold. Cold okay. is my favorite song, hands down. And we're getting in our feels. Everybody in the group is just like, got their phones, doing the thing, right? Yeah. And suddenly, you look oh, over. Oh, the to... Madison show. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Oh, fuck. That was a weird one. It was weird because I look up and you're just like looking over yonder and you're like, <laughs> cut, cut it, stop. cut it, cut it. Yeah. Yeah. What? It... Could you tell me like what you saw? S well, all I saw when I had to stop the show was just security getting involved in some sort of thing in the front. And I didn't, like, what I saw, I now know it was a girl in a wheelchair, but all I saw was someone, like, kind of move in a weird, like, in a, in a way that made me think someone was, like, in a tussle or something like that. I don't know what I thought I saw, but I, security was getting involved, and I didn't know if it was a safety hazard or not. So I just called it um, just as a quick pause to see what was up. And I still don't fully know what happened. I What I think happened is there was a lady who was trying to get closer to the front or was like being a pain in the butt in the front and bumping into someone who was in a wheelchair, I think. And then so that just caused some, uh, some, some spatting back and forth and then security got involved. And so that's, that's why I, that's what, to my understanding, what happened. I had never had to stop a show before. So I was kind of just like lost for words for what to do. I was just like kind of looking at the situation, trying to make sense of it. And I'm just like, ah, fucking listen, we're all here to love each other. This is not, this is not what we're here to do. I like, is, are we okay? And like, there was so much that I wanted to say in that moment that I just couldn't put to words just because I was just like, when you do this whole show thing, like back and forth every day, you develop a sort of muscle memory. And as soon as something like gets in the way of that muscle memory, it kind of frazzles your whole system. And you're just sort of like, uh, I don't know how to talk right now. I don't know how to move. Because everything's like routine by the numbers. So now I got to think for myself. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. That was a weird one. Yeah, that was kind of odd. I, I will not lie. I don't think I've... I think that's happened one other time. And you know what? I can't even remember. I think that's the first time I've ever been to a show and someone's like had to stop. The, Dude, the when show. I was... um. When I did Slaughterhouse with Motionless, um, fucking whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, you did Slaughterhouse I... a long, a long time ago in the Trinity tour. I did it once. 
But they had to do that. They had to stop their set. How? How? Dude, I want to hear all about this. <laughs> oh, shit. I, just, I DM'd Chris, and he was like, hell yeah. And so I, I, yeah, that, that, I was terrified, but that was a lot of fun. He's so nice. Super nice dude. But they did have to stop their set like four or five times. All for dumb shit. It was it was ridiculous. Black Veil as well. And they, they just did. That was kind of like stopping shows had been happening more and more frequently. It happened uh, during Slaughterhouse right before, like before it was time for me to come up. So they were doing their song and then all that. Like I'm, my anxiety is at like peak right now because I know I'm about to get put on stage in front of like 7,000 people. So obviously my heart's racing and then all of a sudden they have to stop and I'm like, like, <laughs> yeah, but it does happen a lot. And that was the first time it had ever happened to me. And I know that Villa had to stop the show one other date uh, for someone fighting in the crowd. Fighting during a VV set, which is Yeah, ridiculous. right? That's so bizarre. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen to the fucking music. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the show, is, this is not what this is for. I tell you what, speaking of Motionless and White, um, we, so I went and saw Motionless and White and after the Burial Knock Loose and Alpha Wolf, like two or three weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. And I went fucking crazy that show. Like I crowd surfed probably fifteen times, like Hell Mosh yeah. twenty. And I'm um, I'm running back to my people, and I see these guys like putting each other in a headlock, and then these girls are like, "Stop it, stop it!" And I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" And I run over, and I'm like, "Hey, knock it off!" And I yeah. then realized in that moment. I'm not a very big guy. <laughs> These guys are huge. So I need to walk away. And then I just looked at them both and I'm like, we cool? And they nodded and I'm like, all right, see ya. And I took <laughs> off running. I mean, sometimes all all you need is like some stranger to intervene. Like not even physically. Just be like, hey, this is stupid. So they can be like, oh, I think I look kind of stupid right now. <laughs> just like, yeah. I, it, it, obviously... The Alpha Wolf Knock Loose fans are a bit rowdy, and some people do take it too far, but, like, moshing happens. Moshing is a normal thing at shows. Like, fucking just have a... What was the word? Restraint. Be a, yeah, restraint. Be courteous, you know? We're all, we're all, we're all here to make love. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we here to make love? We're all, or, we're all here to love, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're all here to fuck. <laughs> Um, Deadly Fun is the latest album that you guys just released. And yes. I want to know if you could pick one song to put into any mainstream movie. Mm. Like, from... Let's kick it up a notch. We're going to do the last 10 years. So 2013 to 2023, any movie. What song would it be and what movie would you put it in and why? That's a good question. Hold on, let me let me. I want to think this through. So, okay. Oh, I don't know if this falls under that category. This might have been early two thousands. Um, but I would put the Reaper in the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movie. I feel like that would you know turn like him on the motorcycle with the flames. I just feel like because uh, a working title that we were uh, that we were gonna use for the Reaper it was called Hellbound for a while and so i don't know something about ghost rider and the reaper it just seems like it fits i agree i oh, like yeah. that i don't answer. know if that's the last uh, 10 years but i definitely ah. all right <laughs> ian had mentioned something earlier about how when you guys played cold you know everyone's phones were out and stuff yeah. and i just want to ask you anthony what it was like getting that kind of reaction from the crowd and everyone participating by taking their phones out and doing that because it's kind of hard for especially you guys being an opening band i know i've been to shows where the opening band kind of has a hard time getting oh, that yeah. kind of reaction from people so i just wanted to get your thoughts on that um i remember the first time we did it uh i think it was the first or second date of the we're live tour um and the one that comes to mind is specifically is el paso and i remember i called the phone lights and everyone did it and it was just sort of like you can't really explain, like, put words to the feeling you get when the phone lights go up because you get to really see how many people are up there. Obviously, like, with stage lights and everything, I see the first, like, few rows of people, especially on the Black Veil tour because there, there were a lot of fucking people. So, um, 
I see like the first few rows of people, but eventually it just all fades to darkness. When the phone lights come up, you see everyone, everyone on every row, everyone on every, like from front to back, side to side, you get to see the actual size of the audience. And yeah, it's an emotional moment for sure. Like you get to really see, and it means that they're all participating. It means they all give a fuck. It means they all are there present and they want to participate in your show. And it's, yeah, it's easily the most, um, I would say romantic, easy, easily the most emotional moment in, in my show. A few weeks ago, you guys posted uh, a video on, I think, TikTok and Instagram. And you were talking about how Halloween Town wasn't supposed to be your first release or your debut release originally. Correct. And I just wanted to know who persuaded you guys to have that song be your first release and what song was supposed to be your first release if it wasn't that one. So, um, back in that era of the band, we were still kind of figuring out what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to do sort of metalcore, new metal-esque sort of sound. Um, we didn't know we wanted to be a spooky band, right? But we, I, I, all of our conversations outside of music were always about horror movies, always about Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. It was always about like something spooky. And it just kind of was who we were as people. So when I wrote the lyrics to Halloween Town and I sent it, it was instantly like different from all the other songs we were writing because we were writing songs that were just sort of like, you know, emotional songs that were good. And they're, they're songs that honestly we haven't released yet. There's a whole bunch of them, but we just don't feel the need to because the stuff that we're writing now, it feels more like us. Uh, the song that was going to be one of the first released, it was called, it was a demo called Infected. And um, there, there is a complete song somewhere in some Google Drive, but we're probably never going to release it because it's not, it's just not who we are. Um, and as we developed these demos over a period of a few months, Halloween Town eventually came out. Halloween Town was like the fourth or fifth demo that we made, and it just felt different. It felt noticeably different. It was that kind of like, oh shit, wait, something's happening. And Robbie already had done the skeleton get up in a previous band, and he wanted to keep that as his kind of thing. Uh, so we were just kind of like, all right, so we have Halloween Town. We're always talking about spooky shit. Uh, we have a fucking skeleton in our band. Um, we'd be pretty stupid to not <laughs> drop Halloween Town first just to make a statement. And I think it was, um, I think it was Jay who, who made the, this, the final call. Cause I know Tristan originally was sort of against it. He was like, well, I, I, I want to do this too, but do we want it to be right off the rip? Like, do we want to have like almost a gimmick or so? I was like, yeah, I'd say let's make a statement. And like eventually Jay made the final call. Uh, we, we recorded three songs in that kind of production stage. We recorded The Fear, Halloween Town, and a third song called Killjoy that's never going to see the light of day. Um, and yeah, it just felt right. It was just one of those like things you can't explain. It just felt correct. Well, and like you said, it being it's... such like, it being such a cool song and you guys having your own little, like you have your own vibe to the band. I think you like you made the right call doing that because the music oh, seems yeah. so competitive mm -hmm. these days. So you kind of need to get people right away or else it's... You kind of miss your chance. For real. No, it's the imagery of it. And we were always going to be in, like an image laden band. I was always, a, I was always obsessed with like imagery in previous bands I've been in. Like it's, it, it's a thing that stands you out and you know, it just seemed like something different that people weren't doing. And I like that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You guys would have been perfect for the Trinity of territory, man. Right. Oh yeah. You would have been perfect. I mean, I kind of got a little sample of it with the slaughterhouse thing. Mm -hmm. You did. You did. That that's fun. that's still so cool, dude. I like, dude. You guys are taking off. Like, <laughs> at, from a fan standpoint, you guys are. <laughs> yep. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, dude. And you're one thing that we've heard, Victoria and I have both heard, and something that we appreciate is how nice you are. Like every interaction appreciate I've that. ever had with you has just been nothing short of pleasant and. For a guy like me, I've been talking about this a lot in more recent years, but I'm on the autism spectrum. You know, okay. uh, growing up, it's been kind of kind of rough for me to make friends and even just people giving you like weird looks for just being who you are as a human being. Um, it just means the world to people like Victoria and myself and Cassidy, Ruth, Nicole, Bellamy, Bellamy, your oh, number yeah. one I fan. I Easily our number one fan. <laughs> Yeah, we love Bellamy. It just makes our freaking day when somebody even just shows an ounce of kindness. So for that, sir, I commend you. Thank, Thank you. you. I really appreciate hearing that. Like, obviously, yeah, no, obviously, I like to be nice to our fans. I like to, you know, 
But I, I don't view fans as like fans. Like they're they're just cool people that like our music. So it's not yeah. You know, doesn't take much to be nice to people. Just be nice. <laughs> uh something that's been kind of eating at me recently is uh cold and moving on um those two seem to circle around the theme of i guess maybe relationships or moving on as an individual could you kind of shed some light on cold and moving on are those songs for separation are they for moving on as an individual kind of what what are those songs what do they mean to you um I did want to kind of make sort of a like moving on from breakup sort of anthem, if you want to call it that. I obviously I've had my share of breakups and like breaking up. So it's they're songs that speak from personal experience for sure, uh, from like all throughout my life. But I also wanted it to, to be just be a general song that people could just enjoy listening to and enjoy understanding that there are like emotional themes. I want the song like whatever what the song means to me is kind of irrelevant. I want you know you to have um something you can attribute to the song. Um, I've always been a fan of that kind of thing. Like, what is your interpretation of the song? And so I wanted to keep the song, you know, specific enough to where it speaks to my own brain, but also like open-ended enough to where people can put their own, you know, experiences on it and just get meaning that way. This next question is kind of an open-ended question, I guess, but it's just about mental health. So- okay. Mental health is obviously a popular topic in the metal rock scene with the music and stuff. And there's a lot of songs about it. Um, and we just kind of want to get maybe some advice that you'd give to someone that struggles with mental health and just maybe how to overcome it. Yeah. Uh, what I will say is, you know, I'm, I'm a performer. I'm a singer. I am not a mental health expert. Obviously, I have I struggle with what I struggle with. And everyone struggles with something that's different and specific to them. So I, I really couldn't give any one person specific advice. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm all I know how to do is create a safe space for people to talk about their feelings. I know we have a discord and a lot of, and there is like spaces in there for people to sort of express themselves. Uh, especially if they're having a bad time, there's a, there's places for that. And I think that, you know, it always helps to have someone to talk to. Um, I don't want to claim to know how to solve mental health cause that's just not a realistic thing, but, uh, it it does help to talk to people, even people you don't know, even people that you haven't talked to in forever. Um, I guess just check on people, just make sure people are people are doing all right. Just say hey. Doesn't even have to be targeted at mental health. Just say hey, and you know that that hey may be what someone else needs to, you know, keep their sanity, keep their, you know, spirits up. I mean, that's kind of what me and Ian try to do on the show too. We just create a safe space for people. To just- yeah. Especially that was kind of the main thing when we used to do our Psycho Sunday live streams. That was kind of just hang out with people and just give everyone a safe place to just have fun. Yeah. I do love having a Discord because it is, it is. I don't know if you guys know about it, but it's uh, a fan made it and it's just been a really cool little little haven for like super fans and also just people who enjoy like casual fans. Um they're always, you know, talking back and forth in there. They make memes and stuff. And it's just like a good vibe. And, you know, as long as the vibe's good, I want to you know, encourage people to use that as a safe space to just hang out with like-minded people. And as you said, in tall chill. Um, so this is just something I've seen from the standpoint of a biological male. Um, right. And I've even had people make comments to me. And I've seen friends of mine who are guys get kind of made fun of for this. I just right. want to know your your stance on it. Okay. Men are often scrutinized or just made fun of or referred to in hurtful slurs for painting their fingernails. And it's something that, you know, you don't really think about a lot. Yeah. But in this day and age, um, you know, it's something that a lot of men do. And it has nothing to do with their orientation or anything like that. But I just kind of want to know from your standpoint, what, um, what, what's kind of your view on it? Do you have any painting your fingernails? And you know what? We can even kick that up a notch too. And just even eyeliner and makeup that. Yeah. I was going to say, I wear eyeshadow. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a heterosexual biological male and I wear eyeshadow eyeliner, sometimes lipstick. I, and I look 
dope. <laughs> so I yeah. don't, yeah, I, I painted my nails uh, from, I think we were on the limbs tour and I had a full set of black nails and I'm, dude, I'm chilling. Like what? People care about that kind of shit, dude. Ah, oh, fuck. I got bigger fish to fry than people telling me not to wear makeup. Bitch, I look good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'd say do 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 whatever you want, dude. Life's too short to be caring about people's fingernails. It's such a stupid detail that people should be caring about. Right. Exactly. And yet you get all these people who are just like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I look good. I. It's like you said, man. You look and you feel good, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it puts me into a performance headspace too. Like I feel like when I have my makeup on, I am like the animal's kind of off the chain. You know, you get to kind of get into I'm about to kick ass at the show mode. But but also I, I'll I'll even kick it up a different notch. Uh, if you're judging people based on makeup that they're wearing, what they have on their hands, anything like that, you don't know the implication of what that is. Like that could be a cultural thing, that could be a religion thing, that could be a preference thing. Like you you have no idea. So it's like. Why, 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 why are we doing any of that? That's dumb. That's dumb as shit. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Ian, are we uh, ready for the final signature radioactive this question? It, this is it right here. This, this is this. a question that we I'm ask scared. everybody that comes on the show. It is the final question. And there's All a reason right. why it's the final question, because it's that good. So no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Dark Divine is on tour. You guys are driving Super. down the highway. And your van breaks down and it's the middle of the night. So your van breaks down and you look over and there's this house and you guys have to stay in this house overnight, going in this house. And then you find out it's haunted and there's a dead celebrity that haunts you all night. Who would you want haunting you? All night. Um, I'm going to say Betty White. Because I feel like she'd have the most fun. Gotta be kidding me! What's that like the ninth or tenth time we've Everyone gotten Betty White? Betty White? Dude, she's the goat. What do you mean? I, th- who would you want? Like, I want any of the Golden Girls. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the That's Golden great. Girls. <laughs> send B. Arthur. Send me uh, the mom. I don't give a, like or send me uh, yeah, just give me one of the Golden Girls. God, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, without a doubt, Betty White has been the undefeated Popular. number one answer. Yep. She's awesome. She's America's you. grandma. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony, for the last three semesters of my college career at the University of Missouri St. Louis, I have mm-hmm. been learning American Sign Language. And okay. what we do at the end of every episode, which we have not been doing recently. That's a lie, because we haven't done it in forever. Yeah, we haven't done it. <laughs> um, But we used to do this a lot. We do signs, right? Like the people okay. who come on, the band. So we're going to do Dark Divine. First, we're going to do Dark. Okay. Dark. Just Dark. Dark dark ready Mm -hmm. so like this right here Uh divine divine oh wait so do it again so you scrape it like this Uh right and then take it hat right there divine okay i got you i got you i like that i like that a lot So so dark divine there you go. Now you can go up to Jason, Tristan. I'm going to teach every one of those fuckers. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Actually, you know what I'm going to just do it and let them guess what I'm saying. I think that'll be fun. I think like, what did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anthony. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it.